All praises to the Most High. So tonight we're going to be going over the destruction of Nicaena. Okay, this is history of our forefathers when they when we fought against the Greeks and we overthrew them. You understand that the Most High delivered he delivered the Greeks into our hands. You understand. So today we're going to be going over that thing. It's a beautiful history. You understand to stay in the spirit, to stay in the fight, so that you don't lose hope this day. So tonight's topic is destruction of Nicaena, deliverance from oppression. Destruction of Nicaena, deliverance from oppression. What you brothers and sisters need to understand is that this feast is about deliverance from oppression. The, destruct the destruction of Nicaena is deliverance from oppression. I need you men and women to understand this thing. We must praise the most high God for his mercy upon us. You understand? Let's open up with the book of Ecclesiasticus. Sirach 36 verse 3. Let's start there. Sirach 36 and verse 3. Come on. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 36 verse 3. Go ahead. Lift up thy hand against the strange nations and let them see thy power. So now this is the prayer. It says, we pray to the Lord that he must lift up his hand against the strange nations. The strange nations is the strangers that, we, that are within us. Okay, hold that. Give me the book of Deuteronomy 28, verse 43. Because our forefather Moses, he prophesied about this thing, that the strange nations will be round about us. Watch this. Deuteronomy 28, verse 43. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verses 43. Go ahead. The stranger that is within thee shall get mm -hmm. up above thee very high, and right. thou shalt come down very low. You see what he's prophesying? As a result of breaking God's laws, he says the strangers that is within us will get up above us very high. When you examine these nations, they are above us. You understand? They rule over us. Not because they are more powerful than us. Not because they are smarter than us. No, because we broke God's commandments. And when we did, the Lord took our power. He took our power from us. You understand? That's why now these strange nations, they rule over us right now because of that. Read again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 43. The stranger, that is, the stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou mm -hmm. shalt come down very low. He shall come down very low. Now we are at the bottom of all nations because we, want, we broke God's laws. Now we are at the bottom of all nations and nations are ruling over us and now they have dominion over us. Go ahead. He shall lend to thee mm -hmm. and thou shalt not lend to him. Go ahead. He, he shall be the head and thou shalt be the tail. You see what he's saying? Our forefather Moses prophesied says, he shall lend to thee and thou shalt not lend to him. The strangers are going to lend us money they will have, they will own the banks. You understand? They will access, they will have access to finances. You understand? So, in order for us to get there, we must go to them. And where would our enemies get these riches from? They would get the riches from us. They would steal our riches. And when we need the things that we are going to be able to use to survive, we have to go to them to borrow from them. You understand? And they will have to lend us the things that they stole from us. Understand that. That's why it says, he shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. You understand? Because right now what's going on in the news is that you see that the, on the... Let me get the newspaper real quick. I'm just going to read the headline. This is the star which came out today. Um, the star is called... The, the headline in the forefront says... Big battle with the with the apartheid banks looms. APSA and FNB are among the lenders accused of discrimination. APSA and F and, and FNB, where did they get the riches from? These banks that are operating today, they are operating with what? Slave money. They stole riches from us. They stole the land, the resources. They, they, they stole the minerals upon the land, and they enslaved us. And they opened banks with money don't, that don't belong to them. They own gold and riches, which with those riches, they don't belong to them, but they were able to open banks. You understand? So now they are discriminating against us 
with the money and the riches, you understand, they stole from us. I need you men and women to understand what's going on. Okay? Now let's go back. Sarah chapter 36, verse 3. That's just one of the highlights on the that's the that's the highlight on the on the newspaper. You understand? So you can buy the newspaper and read it for yourself. Okay, it came out today. Okay, read that. Sarah 36, verse 3. Come on. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 36, verse 3. Lift right. up thy hand against the strange nations and mm -hmm. let them see thy power. So that's the prayer we must have. We must pray that the most high God lift up his hand against these strange nations that speak evil of us, that they stole from us, that they are sitting upon the riches, you understand, that they stole from our forefathers and foremothers, and their children are benefiting from that. You understand? So we must pray this prayer, that the most high God, he, be, he lift up his hand against these strange nations and that they may see his power. Jump down to verse 7. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 36, verse 7. Raise up indignation and pour out wrath. Mm -hmm. Take away the adversary and destroy the enemy. That's, no, that's, this is what we must pray for. We must pray for the most High to raise up indignation, meaning righteous anger, and pour out wrath upon these nations. The nations that are oppressing us, that's the prayer we all must pray. That is the mindset we all must have that the most I be able to deliver us from the hands of these wicked nations that are ruling over us right now. You understand? So read again verse 7. Go ahead. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 36, verse 7. Read. Raise up indignation and pour out wrath. Mm -hmm. Take mm -hmm. away the adversary and destroy the enemy. And do what? And destroy the enemy. We must pray that the Most High be able to destroy these enemies. The Most High, God, that's the prayer that is, He wants us to pray. We must pray for the Lord to destroy our enemies because that's the only time we're going to receive salvation. Salvation will only come when our enemies are destroyed. That's the mindset the Most High God wants us to have. Why? All this, give me Exodus 15, verse 3. This is the reason why the Most High God wants us to have this mindset. Watch this Exodus 15, verse 3. Read that. Yes, sir. The book of Exodus chapter 15, verse 3. The Lord is a man of war. The Stop Lord right is there. his name. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is a man of war. The reason why the Most High God wants us to pray for vengeance, you understand? He wants us to pray for vengeance so that our enemies that are oppressing us might be, must be destroyed is because the Most High God is a man of war. The Most High God is about war. Raising up indignation upon these nations that are oppressing us, that are oppress us during apartheid, that are still oppressing us during apartheid because apartheid has never ended. Apartheid is alive and well in the country. They are feeding it. You understand? You see the the benefit the benefactors of apartheid. You see them running around. They are they are, they are managers of the companies. They are you understand? They own these banks. They own these technology companies. They are the children of apartheid and benefiting from the from the from the evils that their forefathers have done upon us. You see that thing? So the most high God says we must pray for vengeance because he is a man of war. Okay, now let's go back. Go back to um now give me Revelation 19, verse 11. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. The most high God is a man of war. So we must also what? We must have the same mindset that the Lord has. And where do we find that? In the Holy Bible, the book of our forefathers. Now read what you got. Revelation 19, verse 11. Come on. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. Go ahead. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in mm -hmm. righteousness, he doth judge and make war. You see what you see? You see, you see look at that part right there. And it says, in righteousness, in righteousness, he does judge. Who is he going to judge? He's going to judge the nations on earth. And he says he make war because the Lord is a man of war. I need you men and women to understand that you must believe what this Bible is saying as it is written. The most High God is a man of war. The purpose of the most High God upon this earth is to destroy these nations and set us up on high over them. So we can rule over them forever. That's our inheritance. 
Understand that. Okay, go back to Sarah 36. Read verse 7 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 36, verse 7. Wait. Raise up indignation and pour out wrath. Take mm -hmm. away the adversary and destroy the enemy. So we must pray the Lord to take away the adversary and destroy our enemies. Because that's the only condition for us to be delivered from oppression and captivity, apartheid. The only way we are going to be delivered from apartheid, oppression, discrimination, hatred from these wicked demonic nations. Listen, we must pray the Lord to destroy them. That's how we are going to be delivered. Read verse 8. Come on. Make the time short. Mm -hmm. Remember the covenant and let them declare thy wonderful works. You see that thing? We pray the Lord. We must pray to the Lord to make the time short. Because we've been in captivity for too long. We are praying to the most high God to make our time short in captivity. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Matthew 24, 21. Matthew chapter 24, verse 21. We must pray the Lord that he makes the time short because we're catching hell out here. We're catching hell and it's going to get worse. So we must prepare ourselves spiritually for the evils to come. We what you got. Matthew 24, 21. Matthew chapter 24, verse 21. Go ahead. For then shall the great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, mm -hmm. nor ever shall be. So now this great tribulation, because when we pray for vengeance, the most high God will send, will send his son, the Christ, to crack the sky to deliver us from the nuclear war that is going to be taking place on this earth. That's the great tribulation. That's Jacob's trouble right there. During Jacob's trouble is in the midst, that's when the most high God is going to send down his son to deliver his people. Okay, go ahead. And except those days should be shortened. Stop right there. Hold then, on. Read, read verse 21 again. Read verse 21. Something I want out of that verse. Come on. Matthew chapter 24, verse 21. Wait. Right. For then shall be great tribulation. Mm -hmm. Such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. So it says, the, the way, the, the evils that are going to come on this earth, that's the great day of the Lord, the evil day. That great day of the Lord, it says, is going to be so bad that it's not going to be compared to any other deep day, any other day that has ever been on this earth when the Lord brought forth judgment on this earth. You think about uh, during the time of our forefather Noah, you think about during the time of Sodom and Gomorrah. If you thought that was bad, he says, when the Lord returns, is not going to be compared to any other event that has ever taken place on this earth. That's the day of wrath, the day of the Lord's anger and judgment. You understand? So that's why he says, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, no ever shall be. Give me that in Daniel 12, verse 1. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. The Lord is telling us the evil that's coming on this earth. We must prepare ourselves. So when we pray for vengeance, guess what? That's what's coming. You understand? Read what you got. Daniel 12, verse 1. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. Go ahead. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the mm. great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. You see that thing? Michael is the archangel. Michael is not Christ because the Jehovah's Wickedness Church, they say, no, Michael is, is Jesus the Christ. No, no, no. Read that again. Michael is the archangel. Okay, read again. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. Go ahead. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great mm. prince which standeth for read. the children of thy people. You see that thing? The great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. So Michael is not standing for everybody. Michael is the archangel. His job is to bring forth what? Is to bring forth vengeance on this earth also. And not only that, but to deliver the children of the people. So Michael is a what? He's a captain. He's a captain of the angels in, heaven, in the heavens. You understand? He reports to Christ. He's a, he's a, the, Mike, Michael is an archangel. He's about warfare. Understand that? Okay. Read that again. Daniel 12, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. Wait. And there shall be 
a time of trouble such as mm. never was since there was a nation even to that same time. Come on. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. You see that thing? It says, it says there shall be a time of trouble. The time of trouble is the great indignation that the great tribulation that we're reading about in Matthew 24, 21. That great tribulation is that time of trouble, Jacob's trouble, when the midst of World War III. When World War III is taking place, that's Jacob's trouble right there. But he's going to be a builder, the famine, you understand? Nation going against kin kingdom against kingdom, you understand? Great earthquakes and all of that, economic collapse. These are things that are going to happen, you understand? before that big boom happened when World War III is taking place, okay? So it says what? It says, and then that time, thy people shall be delivered. Most people, Michael's people, Daniel's people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. The nations are not written in the book, except their role, which is what? To be slaves unto us. But we are written in the book as the rulers of the earth. You understand? Now give me that in Revelation. Give me Revelation 12 verse 7. Read that. Revelation chapter 12 verse 7. Mm -hmm. And there was war in heaven. Mm -hmm. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Right. And the dragon fought and his angels. Read again. Revelation chapter 12 verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. Hmm. And prevailed not. Hmm. Neither was their Come place on. found anymore in heaven. Because this is during the time World War III. It will be happening. So the most that God will send forth his son, Jesus the Christ. He will come down to do what? To deliver the people. Read again, read seven and eight together. Then I'm gonna get the definition of the word of, 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 of the, the, the definition of the Archangel Michael. What does it mean? What does it mean? Read it. Verse seven and eight again. Revelation chapter 12, verse seven. Mm -hmm. And there was war in heaven. Michael mm -hmm. and his angels fought against the dragon. And Come the on. dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. You see that thing? It says there was war in heaven, meaning what? In rulership. The kingdoms that are ruling right now, not in up there when the most High God is. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, meaning the dragon and his angels. Who's the dragon? Esau, Edom, Idumia, America, Babylon the Great. And the dragon fought and his angels, meaning his allies, his European allies, he's talking about that. Verse 8 says, and prevailed not Yes, meaning the dragon did not prevail against Michael and his angels, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. Meaning what? They are not going to rule no more upon this earth. They are not going to rule anymore on the earth. That's what we need to understand. Okay, now watch this. Let me share my screen real quick. Okay, hold on a second. Now read that. Who is Michael the archangel? Read that. Reading from blueletterbible.org. Who is Michael the Archangel? One of the most prominent characters in the Bible is Michael the Archangel or Chief Angel. Or Chief Angel. So Michael is the Chief Angel. Michael is not Jesus Christ. Michael is the Chief Angel or the Archangel. Go ahead. His name means who is like God. He is mentioned a number of times in scripture. Okay, read that part again when he says he's the only angel. Read that. He is the only angel specifically designed as an archangel. You see that thing? He says he's the only angel specifically designated as an archangel, meaning the chief angel. Okay, go ahead. His name means who is like God. He is mentioned a number of times in scripture. So meaning what? Michael means who is like God. Okay, read that. Chief Prince, 
Michael is called one of the chief princes. Now read that. Watch this. This, this is what it, his name suggests. Read that part right there. This title suggests a high rank. It does what? Suggests a high rank. So Michael, his title suggests a high rank. That's the archangel. That's why it's called the arch, the archangel. Okay, the archangel. Okay, that's it on that. That's it on that. Now, let's go back. Let's go back to Revelation 12, verse 7 and 8 again. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. Go ahead. And there was war in heaven. Michael mm -hmm. and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed yes. not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. Meaning no more rulership for this wicked demonic nation called Esau, Edom, Idumia, Babylon the Great. Okay, now go back to Matthew 24, 21 now. Matthew 24, verse 21. Matthew chapter 24, verse 21. Go ahead. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, mm -hmm. no ever shall be. So that great tribulation is talk about what Jacob's travel, that great travel, the time of travel that we read about in Daniel. Go ahead. And except those days should be shortened. Except those days should be what? And except those days should be shortened. Ex and except those days should be shortened, meaning what? The time of Jacob's trouble. The time of Jacob's trouble, he says, except those days of Jacob's trouble be shortened, meaning during the time of indignation upon this earth. The Lord, that's why the, 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 the prayer in Sirach says, make the time short. That's the prayer we all must have, that the most high God make the time short in captivity so that we may be delivered from oppression. You understand? Go ahead. There should no flesh be saved, mm -hmm. but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. You see what he's saying? It says they shall be, they shall, they should be, they should no flesh be saved. So what we are reading here, this is Christ speaking. He says, except those days should be shortened, they should no flesh be saved. Meaning what? When Esau goes to war with Esau, when they bomb one another, they're going to bomb one another to destroy everybody on this earth. That's their mindset. Meaning what? They don't want to go out by themselves. They want to wipe out every living creature on this earth. That's Esau's mindset. That's the white man's mindset. So Christ is saying, but for the elect's sake, meaning for those brothers and sisters that are keeping God's commandments, it says what? It says those days shall be shortened. Meaning what? While World War Three is going on, you understand? When it's at its peak, when they're about to wipe out the face of the earth, that's when the Lord is, the most high God is going to send down Christ to intervene, to deliver the elect. Those brothers and sisters that keep God's commandments, that they may be delivered in those days, in that day of trouble. That's what we're reading here. Read again. Verse 22, come on. Matthew chapter 24, verse 22. Go ahead. And except those days should be shortened, there mm -hmm. should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Give me that in Isaiah 45, verse 4. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Meaning the most high God is going to send Christ, his son, to crack the sky to fulfill Luke 1, verse 71. Okay, read that. Isaiah 45, verse 4. Read. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 4. Go ahead. For Jacob, my servant, sake, and mm. Israel, mine elect. Who is God's elect? Israel, mine elect. And Israel, my elect. So Israel, we are the elect of God. So among the 12 tribes of Israel, there are those that are ordained to keep God's commandments and there are those that are ordained for God's destruction. They are not going to repent. They are going to die. That's what the Lord, that's what Isaiah is prophesying. Okay, now go back to where he was at now. Okay, give me Sarah chapter 36. Um, read verse 9. Sarah 36 verse 9. Let's read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 36 verse 9. Go ahead. 
Let him that escapeth be consumed by the rage of the fire. Mm -hmm. And let them perish that oppress the people. You see that thing? Let him that escapeth be consumed by the rage of the fire. Because this time, World War Three is going to be what? Nuclear war. It's going to be nuclear war. It's not going to be water. You understand? It's going to be fire. So it says, he that escape, they must be consumed by the what? The rage of the fire. Let them perish that oppress the people. Who's oppressing the people upon this earth? The white man and all his allies that support him in oppressing the 12 tribes of Israel scattered around the world through colonization, forced migration, and slavery. You understand? So the Lord is saying, they are the ones that are going to be consumed by the rage of the fire. You understand? Because they are oppressing the people. So we must pray for this. We must pray for the Most High God to bring forth indignation upon this earth. For these nations that are oppressing us, they must be put to death. That saith the Lord. Now watch this. Give me 2nd Esther 16 verse 1. 2nd Esther chapter 16 verse 1. All these nations that are oppressing us, they are speaking evil of us. Listen, they are going to be judged according to all the ways that are written in this book. We what you got. 2nd Esther 16 verse 1. Read. 2nd Esther chapter 16 verse 1. Go ahead. Woe be unto thee, Babylon and Asia. Mm -hmm. Woe be unto thee, Egypt and Syria. So Babylon, Asia, Egypt, Syria. These are the nations that are, these are these, these, these nations right here. These are the nations that work together with America to oppress the people. And it's not all of them. You read the list, the whole list, God's hit list is written in Psalms 83. In Psalms 83, you read about God's hit list. All the nations that they are on God's hit list that the most High God is going to destroy. So Babylon goes into Babylon the Great, the United States of America. Okay, go ahead. Verse two, Great. Get up yourselves with clothes of sack and hair. Beware mm -hmm. your children and be Great. sorry for your Come destruction on. is at hand. You see what the Lord is saying? Is as America, these nations that are listed here and all the other nations that you read about in Psalms, the 83rd chapter, he says, then get up yourself with cloth with, with clothes of sack, meaning what? You better you better lament. And hey, bewail your children, meaning what? The nations, the, the meaning what? Edomite nations, you understand? European nations, and all the other nations that support America. That's the Arab, the Chinese, the Japanese, you understand? They support America. Okay, Hamites. It says what? Be sorry for your destruction is at hand. America's destruction is at hand. While America's destruction is at hand, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's why Jacob is waking up right now. That's why all Israel is waking up. Wherever we're scattered all around the world, the nation of Israel is waking up. The most High God is having mercy upon his sons and daughters. Jump down to verse 4. Come on. Second Ezra, chapter 16, verse 4. Great. A fire is sent among you, and mm -hmm. who may quench it? Nobody's going to quench this fire that's coming. Who's going to bring the fire? The Lord is bringing the fire. Okay? Watch this. Jump down to verse 9. Come on. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 9. Wait. A fire shall go forth from his wrath. And mm -hmm. who is he that may quench it? Nobody. A fire shall go forth from his wrath. Whose wrath? The Lord's wrath. The most High God. A fire shall be sent forth from his wrath. And who is, a, who is he that may quench it? Nobody's going to quench this fire. Nobody's going to quench this fire because guess what? They've been oppressing us for too long. It's time for these nations to get judged for what they've done to us. Because we serve a just God. We serve a just God. But we must pray for vengeance. So these nations can be what? Can be put to shame. Can be destroyed. You understand? Watch this. Give me a second at verse 13 verse 5. Second Ezra chapter 13 and verse 5. You know what? Start with three. Second Ezra chapter 13, verse 3. Let's start there. Okay, come on. Second Ezra chapter 13, verse 3. Great. And I beheld, and lo, that man was strong with the thousands of heaven. Great. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. That's Jesus the Christ now. That's when the Lord shows up on the scene. 
It says, a man that works strong with the thousands of heaven, meaning with the chair, with the what? With the multitude of angels. The Lord is going to enter into the sky. He will crack the sky and descend upon this earth. You understand? To do what? To deliver the 12 tribes of Israel and to shut these nations down, to destroy them. Okay, go ahead. Jump down. Read on. Keep reading. Verse 4. And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all mm -hmm. day bent that heard his voice. Now that's heavy like, right there. He says, when they heard his voice, he says, all day bent that heard his voice. Meaning what? They were just, they were, they, they, it was called, it's called spontaneous combustion. When they heard the voice of the Lord, they were just on flames. Mm. That's beautiful right there. Listen, that's why when you read Daniel 12 and 1, you read Matthew 24, verse 22. It says, 21, it says, the level of indignation that's going to come upon this earth has never been seen before on this earth, ever. It's never been done. Okay, read verse 5. Come on. Now keep reading. Finish verse 4. All they bent that heard his voice, like mm -hmm. as the earth faileth when it feeleth the fire. You see that thing? Like as the earth, the, the, like as the earth faileth when it feeleth the fire. Ray, go ahead. And after this, I beheld, and lo, mm -hmm. there was gathered together a multitude of men. Out this of multitude number. of men, this multitude of men is talk about the nations on earth. The multitude of men is the nations on earth. Go ahead. Um, um, out of number, from the four winds of the heaven, to subdue mm. the men that came out of the sea. To subdue the men that came out of the sea, meaning what? The atmosphere. Not the Atlantic Ocean, but the atmosphere, the sky, up there in the sky, up there in the heavens. That's the sea is talking about. You can read about that in Genesis 1, verse 6 through 8. Okay, jump down to verse 10. Go ahead. Second Ezra chapter 13, verse 10. Great. Right. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire. You and out of thing? his lips. The, hold on. This is, let everyone that escaped be consumed by the rage of the fire. Who's going to be doing that? The Lord with the thousands of heaven. When he's coming to judge the nations for their evil and for their sins. Okay? While he's delivering the elect. Okay, go ahead. And out of his lips, a flaming breath. Ray. And out of his tongue, he cast out sparks and tempests. Mm, go ahead. Come on. And they were all mixed together. The blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest. Come on. And fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight. The multitude and that was prepared to fight is the nations. Because the nations are going to be fighting one against another when the Lord cracked the sky. Okay, go ahead. And burn them up, everyone, so that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived, but only Amen. dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. Now that's heavy right there. It says this multitude that was prepared to fight, when Christ opened his mouth, he says, listen, he says, so that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived. As soon as he opened his mouth, they were evaporated. There was certain fire and they were evaporated. The only thing that was left was what? Dust and smell of smoke. So listen, they are not ready for what's coming. These nations that are building these nuclear bombs, they are not ready for what's coming because Christ says, I'm not going to meet you as a man. Get that in Isaiah 43, Isaiah 47 verse 3 real quick. He says, I'm not going to meet you as a man. I'm going to meet you as something else the son of God, with all power, you understand, that the most high God will bestow upon him. Watch this, Isaiah 47 verse 3. Why am I going over this? I'm going over this because I'm trying to show you what the most high God is commanding us to pray for. We must pray for vengeance, that the Lord must bring forth his son to destroy these nations and put them in captivity so we can rule forever and live forever. You understand? Now read that. Come on. Isaiah chapter 47, verse 3. Ray. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yea, mm -hmm. Talking about Babylon. Shame. 
He's talking about Babylon in verse 1, the Chaldeans in verse 1, which is making reference to the same thing. Go ahead. Babylon, which is America. Babylon, the great, the great hall. Read. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yea, mm -hmm. thy shame shall be seen. Read. I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man. You see that thing? I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man. That's what Christ is saying right there. That's, this is Christ speaking through Isaiah. He says, I'm not going to meet you as a man. Who is he talking to? America. I'm not going to meet you as a man, the Lord is saying. Because America is going to be wiped out. Understand that. That said the Lord as it is written. Now watch this. Um, go back to Zerach 36 now. Read verse 10. Zerach 36 verse 10 forward. Okay. Read that. Ecclesiasticus chapter 36 verse 10. Go ahead. Smite in sunder the heads of the rulers of the heathen that say, there is none other but we. You see that thing? So now Sterak is being specific of who he's talking about. He says, he says what smite in sunder the heads of the rulers of the heathen. Who's the head of the rulers of the heathen? America, the EU. You understand? All these European allies, all these European nations. You understand? That, that, go, that talks about Russia. You understand? The Dutch, the French, the British, the Portuguese, the Spaniards, the Americans. You understand? Russians. These are the heads of the rulers of the heathens. You understand? America being on top because they support America. Okay? Read again. Verse 10. Ecclesiasticus chapter 36, verse 10. Read. Smite in sunder the heads of the rulers of the heathen that say, mm -hmm. there is none other but we. Because the heads of the rulers of the heathen, they are the one that says they are God. Meaning there's no God but themselves. That's what they say, right? They, who's the head of the who's the heads of the rulers of the heathen? Give me a buckle 313. A buckle. Chapter 3, verse 13. Smite in sunder the heads of the rulers of the heathens. Who's that? Let's find out. Buckle chapter 3, verse 13. Read that. Come on. Just find Zephaniah. Find Zephaniah, you find Abaku. Come on. Abaku, chapter 3. May I get the verse? Verse 13. Verse 13. Abaku, Come on. chapter 3, verse 13. Thou went as forth for the salvation of thy people. You see that even thing? for salvation. Hold on. It says, Thou went as forth for the salvation of thy people. So the salvation is not for everybody. Is for who? Is for Habakkuk's people. You understand? The salvation is for Habakkuk's people. Christ is only coming. Christ, when he comes, he's coming to deliver the people of Habakkuk, which is who? The 12 tribes of Israel. Read again. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Thou went as forth for the salvation of thy people. Read. Even for salvation with thine anointed. Thy anointed, the anointed is talking about Christ. Read. Thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked mm -hmm. by discovering the foundation unto the neck, Selah. You see what he's saying? He says, Thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked. So the head of the rulers of the heathen is called the wicked. The head of the rulers of the, of, of the heathen is called the, the wicked in Habakkuk 3, verse 13. Okay, who's that? Watch this. All that? My, Malachi chapter 1, verse 4. Malachi 1, verse 4. Let's read that. Okay. The Lord is going to wound the head out of the house of the wicked. Who's that? America. Let's prove that. Malachi 1, verse 4. You understand? Because America, the EU, they are all white people. Amalek also, which call themselves Jewish in our land. They are all white people. Just running rampant upon this earth. It's time to put a stop to that thing. Read that. Malachi 1 verse 4. Read. Malachi chapter 1 verse 4. Go ahead. Whereas Edom saith, we are mm -hmm. impoverished. Whereas Edom saith, the subject matters about Edom here in this verse. Whereas Edom saith, Edom, Esau, Idumia, is the biblical name for the white man. He is the biblical devil. Read verse 4 again. 
Malachi chapter 1 verse 4. Come on. Whereas Edom saith, we are mm. impoverished. Right. But we will return and build the desolate places. Right. Thus says the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down, and mm. they shall call them the border of wickedness. And the people against whom the Lord has indignation forever. You see what it's called? You see what Edom is called? What Edom is called is called the border of wickedness, meaning the end, the beginning and end of all wickedness on earth. They are, the, they are responsible for that thing. And the people, meaning the nation, against whom the Lord has indignation forever. So this indignation that we're reading about in Sirach 36 is what? Is channeled for Esau, Edom, Idumia, Babylon the Great, the United States of America, and the EU. You understand? They are the head of the rulers of the heathen. They are the heads. That's what we're reading here. Okay. Now go back to where he was at now. Habakkuk 3. Verse 13 again. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 13. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people, even Wait. for salvation with thine anointed. Mm -hmm. Thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked by Come discovering on. the foundation unto the neck, Selah. So the Lord is going to cut the neck. He's going to cut the head off of the, of, the, of the rulers of the heathen, which is who? Esau, I do me. That's what the Lord will do. Go ahead. Verse 14. Come on. Thou didst strike through with his staves the head of his villages. Mm -hmm. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. Their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. You see that thing? So the white man and all the European nations and all these other nations that support America, guess what? It says they rejoice in devouring us because we're the poor. We are the poor. That's why it says their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. How do they destroy the nation of Israel secretly? Guess what? They give us poor education, poor housing. Okay, they set up um, they set up bottle stores in our communities. They set up abortion clinics in our communities. You understand? They introduce drugs and guns in our communities. You see that thing? They sell pork into our communities. They put condoms everywhere. Whatever they air on TV. They push homosexuality in our community. You understand? They create an environment for sin to thrive. During the apartheid, during our apartheid was still hot, when it was still in your face. Right now, it's not in, a, it's not in your face. It's what is done in secret. Apartheid is still alive and well, but it's done in secret. Back then in the 60s, it was not done in secret. It was in public. Now they do it secretly. That's why it says... Their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. You understand? So that's what that's what that's what gives them joy. That's why when you read Genesis 27, when um when Esau he says he was gonna kill our forefather Jacob, he says he comforted himself. He found comfort in killing us. So that's why when they kill, that's when they are okay. And when they go to court in the media, they say, no, they have psychological hangups. But when anything happens in the black community, they say, no, they are savages, they are animals. But when they do it, they have psychological problems. You see that thing? They are rejoicing is as to devour the poor secretly. Who's the poor? Get that in Isaiah 14, the last verse. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 32. Go ahead. What shall one then answer the messenger of the nation? That the Lord has founded Zion, and the poor of his people shall trust in it. You see that thing? So Zion is another name for Israel. We are the poor. We are the ones that everything, everything was stolen from us. Our land, our resources, our culture, our identity, our names, our, everything was stolen from us. You understand? Our minerals are still being stolen in broad daylight. By who? By the people that have colonized us. They put us under heavy uh, or system of apartheid, and they are still pushing that thing on a daily basis upon us. 
We see it when we're at the plantations. We see it when we go to the malls. We see it when our children go to schools. We see that thing on a daily basis. You see it when you apply for a loan. You see it when you're looking for a house. You see it when you want to buy a car. You see it when whatever it is that you want to do in the society, guess what? Apartheid is written all over it because they hate and despise as this nation. The only reason why they don't do it in public, they do it in secret. And not only that, the only reason why they can work, quote unquote, work with us at the companies is because they tolerate us. That's it. But they hate and despise our guts. That's what the Lord wants us to understand. Go back to go back to Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 14. Read it. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 14. Go ahead. Thou didst strike through with his staves the head of his villages. Mm -hmm. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. Their hey. rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. You see that thing? We are the poor. But the Lord says he's going to what? He's going to strike through with his staves the head of the villages. Who's the head of his villages? America, Esau, Edom, Idumia, white people, as they are called today, so-called white people. You understand? The most I said he's going to destroy them. And guess what? They are not working alone. They are working with the Chinese, the Arabs. You understand? They are working with the Japanese. Look at what they are doing with the, to our people over there in China. And, and what? In India, the East Indians, the Persians, Iranians, Iraqis, the Saudi Arabians, all of them. They are all working together, these nations, to put the 12 tribes on in confusion and in poverty. There's a video that is, was being circulating around when this French, this, this, this French guy, he was saying that, listen, we need to make sure that we keep Africa impoverished, meaning the dark nations. We must keep them impoverished because if they were to come together, you understand, they are, we are going to be, we, we're going to be in the Europe and America, all these nations that depend upon this continent, they are all going to starve. So they have to make sure that they keep us in poverty. You understand? That's why you see, I mean, this continent, Africa, is the richest continent on earth, but yet we are the poorest. Who's doing all this? The white man. He's the one that's doing that. The so-called white man. He's doing that. You understand? Because when we speak about it, they say, no, we we pushing hate. No, no. This is strictly biblical. Understand that? Now watch this. Jump down to verse 16. Because when we pray for vengeance, this is what the Lord says he will do to our enemies. We must rejoice in that thing. Now read that. Habakkuk 3, 16. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 16. Go ahead. When I heard, my belly trembled. You my see that lips. Thing? Meaning, meaning when the Lord returns. When the Lord is coming to bring forth vengeance and righteous indignation upon Esau, Edom, Idumia, and all the other nations that support them. Go ahead. My lips quivered at the voice. He says he was scared. He was afraid because of what? Because he saw the destruction that is going to take place on this earth. Like we read about in Daniel 12 and 1, Matthew 24, verse 21. This is a Bakuk speaker. He says, when I heard my baby trembled, he says he was afraid. He was in great fear. Go ahead. Rottenness entered into my bones. Rottenness goes into fear. Rottenness, when it says rottenness entered into my bones, that's fear. Fear entered into my bones. Go ahead. And I trembled in myself mm -hmm. that I might rest in the day of trouble. You see that thing? That I might rest in the day of trouble. The same trouble that we read about in Daniel 12. You understand? This day of trouble is, guess what? Is the day of what? Great tribulation that is going to take place on this earth. Go ahead. When he cometh up unto the people, he will mm -hmm. invade them with his troops. He will do what? He will invade them with his troops. He will invade them with his troops. That's the judgment that's coming on this earth. That's why Christ says through Sirach, he says, pray for vengeance. Pray for the destruction of your enemies because why? Our salvation draweth nigh. So we need to nag the Lord daily to destroy our enemies. That's a righteous prayer right there, to pray for vengeance, okay? Now watch this. Give me a second, Maccabees now, 15 verse 1. Let's get into the destruction of my king. The reason why I'm prefacing the class with this, I need to put you in the right spirit, okay? Second Maccabees 15 verse 1. Watch this. 
Second Maccabees chapter 15, verse 1. Go ahead. But Nicana, hearing that Judas and his company were in the strong places about Samaria, resolved mm -hmm. without any danger to set upon them on the Sabbath day. On the Sabbath day. So Nicana wanted to come against us on the Sabbath day. Who's Nicana? All this. Give me a second, Maccabees 14, verse 1. Let's start there. Let's take a step back. Let's go back into the history. Let's dig up some history now. Second Maccabees 14, verse 1. Read that. Second Maccabees chapter 14, verse 1. Mm -hmm. After three years was Judas informed that Demetrius, the son of Sele Seleucus, having Seleucus. entered... The son of Seleucus. Okay, come on. The son of Seleucus having entered by the haven of Tripolis with a great power and navy. So now Demetrius was a king, King Demetrius. You understand? He says the son of Seleucus. So we're gonna find out who, who Nicana is. What is his relationship to King Demetrius? These were all Greeks, you understand? These were all Greeks descending from Alexander and his four generals. That's why you're reading about Seleucus here. Okay. Now give, read on. Verse two. Come on. Had taken the country and killed Antiochus and Lysias, his protector. Lysias, his protector. Lysias, his protector. Read again, verse two. Second Maccabees, chapter 14, verse two. Mm -hmm. Had taken the country and killed Antiochus and Lysias, his protector. So now it says Demetrius killed Antiochus and Lysias his protector. All this. Give me 1 Maccabees 7, verse 1. 1 Maccabees chapter 7, verse 1. Let's read that. 1 Maccabees chapter 7, verse 1. Read. Right. In the hundred and one and fiftieth year, Demetrius, the son of Seleucus, departed from Rome and came up with a few men unto a city of the sea coast and reign there. Now, now you have Demetrius coming from Rome. He's coming what? He says he's coming to set up and so he can rule. Go ahead, watch this, read. And as he entered into the palace of his ancestors, so it was that his forces had taken Antiochus and Lysias to bring them unto him. Now he's taking over. You see what he's doing? Demetrius is taking over. So what is he? He's destroying his own Edomite brothers to do or to take over because they always fight amongst themselves. Look at what Putin is doing in Russia, in, in, in Ukraine. It's the same thing we're reading here. Edomites fighting against other Edomites, taking over their, the part of their empires. That's what Demetrius is doing here. Go ahead. Wherefore, when he knew it, he said, let me not see their faces. Let me not see their faces. Go ahead. So his host slew them. Now, when Demetrius was set upon the throne of his kingdom. Now, Demetrius is set up now on the throne of his kingdom. Now, he's sitting upon the throne of his kingdom. He's the king now. Okay. Now, hold this. Give me the book. Go back to um, 2 Maccabees 14. Read verse 3. We're going to read 3 through 6. Okay. 2 Maccabees 14 verse 3. Now, while that was going on, now Demetrius is the king, right? King Demetrius now is sitting upon his throne. He killed Antiochus and Lysias, his protector. Now watch this. Now we're going to see some names. The people, there's characters that are going to enter into the scene now. You understand? Watch this. Second Maccabees 14 verse 3. Read that. Second Maccabees chapter 14 verse 3. Mm -hmm. Now one, Alchemus, who had been high priest and had defiled himself willfully in the times of their mingling with the Gentiles. Seeing that by really? no means he could he really? could save himself. Seeing that by no means he could save himself, nor have any more access to the holy altar. Now read that verse again. Alchemus. Alchemus was an Israelite. Alchemus was an Israelite. Okay. Read that again, verse 3. Second Maccabees chapter 14, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Now one Alchemus, who had been high priest and had defiled himself willfully in the times of their mingling with the Gentiles, seeing that by no means he could save himself, nor have any more access to the holy altar. So now what's happening here is that when 
Demetrius took the kingship. He was the king of the Greeks. It says Alchemus was one of the high priests in Israelite. He says he defiled himself willfully in the times of their mingling with the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? The Greeks. Demetrius in them. You understand? It says, um, he thinks that by no means he could save himself nor have any more access to the holy altar because remember, the Greeks are taking over. So that means the Greeks are going to have power. The Greeks have power. So they can again have control of what will, how, what, how the Israelites must move. You understand? So let's see what he's going to do. Hold the, keep reading. Verse 4. Go ahead. Came to King Demetrius in the 101 and 50th year, presenting unto him a crown of gold and a palm, mm. and also the bows which were used solemnly in the temple. And so that day he held his peace. So you see what he did? He decided, you know what? Let me go and, and, what? and batter this Greek king. Let me go and butter him. So he buttered him with what? With gifts. Crown of gold, a palm, and also the bowls which were used solemnly in the temple. So he was stealing from the temple to go and do what? And buy his, his relationship with Demetrius. That's the thing, same thing that the, these corrupt politicians are doing today. That's why we hear all these scandals of these corrupt politicians, our brothers in the, in the politics. That's what we're reading here. The same thing that Alchemist is doing is the same spirit of the politicians today because they are all moving in the same spirit. Democracy, Christianity is all the same thing. Okay, go ahead. Howbeit, having gotten opportunity to further his foolish enterprise and being called into counsel by Demetrius and asked how the Jews stood affected and what they intended, he answered thereunto. So now Demetrius is asking, He's asking the whereabouts, what's going on in your nation. He's asking that. You see what he says, ask how the Jews stood affected and what they intended, he answered there unto. Now he's going to spill the beans. He's a sellout. That's the point. That's why Investri says he, what, he defiled himself willfully in the times of their mingling with the Gentiles. Go ahead. Those of the Jews that we called Assyrians, whose called captain what? is that be called Assyrians. You see that thing? It says, those of the Jews that be called Assyrians. So the Jews during the time of Judah Maccabee, they were called Assyrians or Hasmonians under the Hasmonean dynasty. That's them. Okay, go ahead. Whose captain is Judas Maccabees, nourish war that are seditious. Hold on. Nourish war. Don't read, don't read that quickly. Read verse six again, okay? Second Maccabees chapter 14, verse 6. Go ahead. Those of the Jews that be called Assyrians, whose captain is Judas Maccabees, nourish war. Stop right there. So now this is Alchemas explaining to King Demetrius. It says, those of the Jews that be called Assyrians, he's singling them out because there were there was an elite group, you understand, of Israelites that was known in in the in, in Greece that don't mess with them. You understand? It says whose captain is Judah Maccabee. You see what he's doing? He's now dropping names now. He's dropping names. He's being specific of which sect of the Israelites they are. Not only that, he's also mentioning the captain of their host. He says, this man, he nourish war. He's nourishing war. Meaning what? This guy, this dude, he likes to fight. So Fast forward to today, we like to go to camp and we take no, we take no BS. We teach from sun up to sundown. And you see, you don't think the people see that? They see that. That's the same thing they are saying today. You understand? That we nourish war. It's the same thing. I need you men to understand that. Go ahead. Whose captain is Judas Maccabees, nourish war and are seditious and will not let the realm be in peace. You see that thing? You see what he's saying? He's saying they are causing problems. That's what he's doing now. He's slandering, he's slandering us. He says they are speaking, they are, they, they are what? He says they are causing problems in the nation. That's what he's telling King Demetrius. Why? Because he wanted to be the high priest. So he's creating himself a what? A slot. That's what he's doing right there. By slandering his own nation. 
These are wicked Negroes, okay? So all this, give me 1 Maccabees 2, 42. 1 Maccabees 2, verse 42, okay? You know, hmm, before we get there, before we get there, give me 1 Maccabees 7, verse 5. We coming back here. 1 Maccabees 7, verse 5. Let's read that. I just want to get Maccabees. the next guy. I just want to get another account, the same account. There's a, there's a couple of details that we want to deal with. You understand? So read that. 1 Maccabees 7, verse 5. 1 Maccabees chapter 7, verse 5. Mm -hmm. There came unto him all the wicked and ungodly men of Israel. Read. Having Alchemist, who was desirous to be high priest for their captain. You see that thing? So there were those wicked Israelites and Alchemist was in the forefront of them. So he was controlling this whole crew. So it says he was what? He says, unto him, all the wicked and ungodly men of Israel. So it wasn't just one, but he was in the forefront controlling this whole thing. Having Alchemist, who was desirous to be high priest. So he desired to be high priest for their captain. Go ahead. Watch this. Read. And they accused the people to the king. You see that thing? Say. They accused our forefathers to the king. So slander. Read. Say. Judas and his brethren have slain all thy friends mm. and driven us out of our own land. You see what he's saying? He says, Judas, has, well, Judas and his brethren have slain all your friends. Not only that, he has driven us out of our own land. So now, Dimitrius will be sitting there and say, mm, that's a wicked Negro right there. You understand? And he's also looking at Alchemist and saying, you dumb as hell. You coming here to speak evil of your own nation? You see that thing? Go ahead. Now, therefore, send some men whom thou trustest, mm -hmm. and let him go and see what havoc he hath made among us and in the king's land, and let him punish them with all them that aid them. You see what he's saying? So he said, listen, you need to choose somebody out of your own army and host and all that and go and deal with this thing on our behalf because we can't do it, right? Then the king chose Bacchides, a friend of the king who ruled beyond the flood and was a great man in the kingdom and faithful to the king. He was faithful. Bacchides was faithful to King Demetrius. So Bacchides was a Greek, right? And him he sent with that wicked alchemist mm. whom he made high priest and commanded that he should take vengeance of the children of Israel. So now imagine you've got an Israelite and a heathen, they are going to take vengeance on the Israelites based on the evil report of Alchemist, right? So they departed and came with a great power into the land of Judea, where they sent messengers to Judas and his brethren with peaceable words deceitfully. So now they were what? They were. They were faking the fun. They were not being real. But they made it seem like we're coming for peace, but they did not come for peace. Right. But they gave no heed to their words, for they saw that they were come with a great power. You see that thing? They saw that they came with a great power. Read. Then did, did they assemble unto Alchemist and Bacchides, a company of scribes, to require justice. So now they say, okay, we, they says what? They, they said, then did they assemble unto Alchemist and Bacchides, a company of scribes, to require justice? Because now it says, okay, let's deal with this. But they already know that they are coming for mischief. You understand? So they are playing along. It's called psychological warfare. Go ahead. Now the Assyrians were the first among the children of Israel that sought peace of them. You see that thing? So the Assyrians were Israelites. The Assyrians were Israelites. Okay, now watch this. Hold this. Give me First Maccabees two forty two now. First Maccabees two, verse forty two. Let's read that. First Maccabees chapter two, verse forty two. Mm -hmm. Then came there unto him a company of Assyrians, who were mighty men of Israel, really? even all such as were voluntarily devoted unto the law. You see what the Assyrians, the Assyrians were Israelites. This is mighty men of Israel, mighty men of Israel. And they were what? They were devoted to the laws of God. 
Okay, so let's go back. Let's go back to um, let's go back to First Maccabees now seven now verse thirteen again. First Maccabees chapter seven verse thirteen. Go ahead. Now the Assyrians were the first among the children of Israel that sought peace of them. Mm -hmm. For said they, one that is a priest of the seed of Aaron is come with this army, and he will do us no wrong. You see what he's saying? He says, of the seed of Aaron. So they are saying he's coming out of who? Aaron's line. You understand? So he's a Levite. Okay, go ahead. So he spake unto them peaceably and swear unto them, saying, we will procure the harm neither of you nor your friends. Okay, so now they are saying, listen, we're not going to do any harm unto you. Go ahead. Whereupon they believed him. How be it? He took of them three score men and slew them in one day, according mm. to the words which he wrote. You see that thing? So now it says, listen, now he, they just said, we're gonna, we're coming for peace. You understand? And they let their guard down. They let, they let their guard down for a second day. And look what happened. They were put to death, many of them. He says, what took three score men and slew them in one day, according to the words which he wrote. Read. The flesh of the saints have they cast out and their blood have they shed round about Jerusalem, and there was mm -hmm. none to bury them. You see that thing? Just like during the time of the Assyrians, when Tobit, our forefather, was burying the dead, and Sennacherib didn't want him to do that. Go ahead. Wherefore, the fear and dread of them fell upon all the people, who said, There is neither truth nor righteousness in them, for they have broken the covenant and oath that they made. Because they just broke the oath. They agree, say, okay, we're not, we're not coming for any uh, problems. We don't want no problems. We're not coming here to war. You understand? We just don't want to negotiate. We want to create a conditions of peace. But they broke that oath. Watch this. Go ahead. After this, removed Barkites from Jerusalem and pitched his tent, his tents in Bezeth. 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 Go ahead. In Bezeth, where he sent and took many of the men that had forsaken him, and certain of the people also. And when he had slain them, he cast them into the great pit. You see that thing? They dropped their bodies into a great pit. That's why when you look during apartheid, that's the same thing that the white man was doing. You understand? Working with, working with sellouts to destroy their own people. Because here you've got Bakites, you've got Alchemists, they're working for King Demetrius. You understand? Because there isn't the... Um, Alchemist's motive was to do what? He wanted to be high priest at all cost, even if it meant destroying his own nation to get it. You understand? Go ahead. Then committed he the country to Alchemist and left with him a power to aid him. So Barkite went to the king. You see that thing? So now they've left the, the country, so they left the country in the hands of Alchemist, which is what he wanted, and left with him power to aid him. Meaning what? He gave him men to assist him, also to serve as what protectorates, to protect him against who? Judah Maccabee and his brethren. Okay? He says, so Bacchus went to the king. So he left and went to see King Demetrius. Now watch this. Hold that. Go back to 2 Maccabees 14. Now read verse 7. 2 Maccabees 14 and verse 7. 2 Maccabees chapter 14 verse 7. So now we are getting a brief account of what we just read in Second Ma in First Maccabees seven, the account of Alchemus when he went to who? King Demetrius, right? Second Maccabees chapter fourteen verse seven. Therefore I, being deprived of mine ancestors' honor, I am in the high priesthood, am now come hither. You see that thing. So now he's saying, listen, the reason why I'm coming here to you is because I'm being deprived of my own ancestors on which is what the high priest because he wanted to be the high priest okay read first verily for the unfeigned care i have of things pertaining to the king and secondly even for that i intend the good of my own countrymen he's for lying. all our nation because right now he's everything that he just did he proves that he hates his people but he's is is lying to king demetrius because he what he wants the position of the priesthood. Okay, go ahead. For all our nation is in no small misery 
through the unadvised dealing of them aforesaid. The, 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 un, the unadvised dealing of them aforesaid is talking about Judah Maccabee and his brethren in verse 6. So he's saying they are unadvised, meaning what the, the way they are behaving is ill advised. They are not supposed to be doing that because they are causing problems for us. Remember, Judah Maccabee and his brethren, they are about the law and order and structure and command and setting the nation in order. Jason was not about that. He was about what? The high priesthood. You understand? He just wanted power. That's what his job. He didn't care about his nation. So, but now he's slandering our forefather Judah Maccabee on this wise. Go ahead. Wherefore, O king, seeing thou knowest all these things, be careful for the country and our nation, which is pressed on every side according to the clemency that thou readily showest unto all. So now the clemency that is showing the king Demetrius is showing is because what? What did he do? What did what did what did Alchemus do? Remember, he in verse four, he brought a crown of gold, a palm, and also the righteous bowls which were used solemnly in the temple. You understand? That's what he was doing. So the king didn't grant clemency because of his own goodwill. No, he was bought to do that. Okay, go ahead. For as long as Judas leave it, it is not possible that the state should be quiet. You see that thing? So now you see he's got hatred against his neighbor. So much so that he's even saying things like, for as long as Judas live it. So what does he want? He wanted our forefather to be put to death. You see that thing? So he's making, a, he's, he's, he's suggesting things in the ear of King Demetrius. You understand? Really? This was no sooner spoken of him, but others of the king's friends being maliciously set against Judas did more incense Demetrius. So what you want to see here is what? What you want to notice here, what we're reading here is betrayal. That's what we're reading here. So if you leave it back then, you're just going to get lost. You must bring it to today. Because as we draw, as our salvation draweth near, guess what? There's going to be a lot of betrayers. There's going to be a lot of betrayers and betrayals. Why? Because we can near into the end. The love of many shall works cold. So what we're reading here, He's talking about spies among us that we don't know yet. Hmm, I said something there. So what I'm showing you is what Alchemist is doing is the same spirit that the Apostle Paul wrote to the church about in the book of Acts. It's the same things that um, we're reading about in the book of Luke. You understand? John 14 as, as well, where the scribes and Pharisees will recruit spies to follow the apostles and Christ around to see what they were teaching. What were they discussing? Where is, the ne where is their next mission? Where are they going to teach? What's going on in that camp? Who's the leader? Who's the this? What are they doing? Get close to him. All of these things. That's what Alchemist was doing. The same things that happened back then, they are, are going to happen today. And this time is going to be the things of Hollywood. Understand that. Okay, go ahead. And forthwith, calling Nikana who had been master of the elephants and making mm. him governor over Judea, he sent him forth. So now Nicana was made governor over Judea. Who made him governor over Judea? Demetrius. King Demetrius made Nicana governor over Judea. He says he was being the master of the elephants because they went to war with us also by what? By learning how to you to fight with elephants. Now watch this. Hmm. Um, read that again. Second Maccabees, chapter 14, verse 12. Go ahead. And forthwith, calling Nicana, who had been master of the elephants, and making him governor over Judea, he sent him mm -hmm. forth. So now, watch this. So Nicana was what? Nicana was made governor of Judea by King Demetrius. Okay, hold this. Give me First Maccabees 7, verse 26 now. First Maccabees 7, verse 26. Okay, let's get some more details about Nicaen. Read that. First Maccabees chapter 7, verse 26. Go ahead. Then the king sent Nicaen, one of his honorable princes, a one man that bet one of his honorable princes. One of his honorable princes. So Nicaen was a captain 
of King Demetrius. He was the captain. He says, one of his honorable princesses. He was one of the captains. Read again, verse 26. Come on. First Maccabees chapter 7, verse 26. Then the king sent Nicanor, one of his honorable princes, a man that bear deadly hate unto Israel, mm. with commandment to destroy the people. You see that thing? So Nicanor was one of the honorable princes of King Demetrius. He says, a man that bear deadly hate unto Israel. So now he found opportunity now to show for this hatred now in full blown, in full force. He's going to show it off now. So he's been bearing hatred against us, deadly hatred. You understand? So now watch this. Um, give me uh, first Maccabees. Give me first Maccabees uh, chapter. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. You know what? Go back to second Maccabees 14, verse 13. Second Maccabees 14, read verse 12 again. Then we're going to read verse 13. Watch this. First Maccabees. Chapter 14, verse 12. Mm -hmm. And forthwith, calling Nicanor, who had been master of the elephants, and making him governor over Judea, he sent him forth. So now imagine oh. this man that bear deadly hatred against Israel, he's been made king over Judea. Just like Rome did when they set up Herod over us during the time of Christ. The same thing. That's the same thing that happening today. During the time of apartheid, that is the same thing. You understand? Buffer Wood, Herzog, D.F. Malan, Jan Smart. You understand? That's what they did back then. They did, they did it also in these last days during apartheid when it was still in your face. The reason why I'm saying that is because apartheid is still alive and well. In fact, it's worse than it's ever been now in these last days. Okay, read on. Verse 13. Come on. Commanding him to slay Judas and to scatter them that were with him, and to make Alchemus high priest of the great temple. You see that thing? So now they made Judas, they made Alchemus the high priest because he went and spoke evil about our forefather. You understand? He slandered our forefather, Judah Maccabee, to the king. That's the same thing that, that, that Iscariot did. It's the same thing. You understand? Go ahead. Verse 14. You know what? Before we get verse 14, give me 1 Maccabees 7, verse 21. 1 Maccabees 7, verse 21. Remember, this Alchemist, he wanted to be high priest of the great temple because he said, listen, I'm being deprived of my, of the, of the, of the, of the, what? I'm paraphrasing it now. He's talking, he was talking about, um, he says that his, his ancestors, the honor of his ancestors, which is the high priesthood. So watch this. First Maccabees 7, verse 21. Let's get into the details of what was entailed in Alchemist's priesthood. Read that. First Maccabees chapter 7, verse 21. Mm -hmm. But Alchemus contended for the high priesthood. Read. And unto him resorted all such as troubled the people. You who, see that thing? So, so it says we contend for the he contended for the high priest. That's why it says if Judah Maccabee is still alive, I'm not gonna be able to do what I want to. I'm not gonna be able to enjoy my priesthood, which I've gotten, you know, which I got it through deceit, which I got through deceit. So now, <clears throat> excuse me, there were all, there were wicked Israelites that joined Alchemists because they also wanted the same thing. Okay, read verse twenty-two, meaning to just to destroy. Judah Maccabee. That's the same thing that's happening today. Because when we go out there to teach, our people, many of our people, they don't want what we, they don't, they don't like what is coming out of the Holy Bible. They hate it. That's why a lot of them, they say, no, we are Illuminatis, we are, we are witches, and all of that stuff. But we're reading the Bible. But he's smoking a blunt, he's smoking hubbly, he's smoking nyaupe, but he's calling us witches. You can't make it up. So what's happening here is that he, you see, when 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 evil, because when you when you look at our communities, the state of our communities, you see there's a lot of evil, and evil and misery loves company. So there's a lot of evil that there is good. So when you come with the light, our people will hate you for the fact that you bring in the light out to rebuke the people. They don't want that. You understand? So that's why 
alchemist had a lot of has had a large following because what he was a wicked nigger. Okay, read verse twenty two again. First Maccabees chapter seven verse twenty two. Mm -hmm. And unto him resorted all such as troubled the people, who after they had got in the land of Judea, of Judah into their power, did much hurt in Israel. So they were what? They were oppressing the people. He says, after they got the land of Judea, Judea back, they were oppressed, they did much hurt into the people. They were oppressing the people. They didn't care about the nation. That's the same thing that these pastors are doing today. This is true. This goes into the pastors as well. Because the pastors, listen, listen, what we are doing when we teach on the streets, the people that come to hear the word or the people that listen from a distance, they go to their pastors, they ask these questions. Now the pastors have to inquire, where are you getting this stuff from? Then it comes, then it comes to their hearing or no, no, no. There's brothers on the streets and this is what they teach. So these pastors, because they cannot confront us, they cannot go toe to toe with us with the Bible, guess where they go? They go to who? They go to, they go to the World Council of Churches. They go to the National Council of Churches. They go to these uh, celebrity pastors because they have access to ESO in high places because they cannot come to us directly. You understand? So that's the same thing here that Alchemus was doing with who? King Demetrius. Okay, go ahead. Now, when Judas saw all the mischief that Alchemus and his company had done among the Israelites, even above the heathen. You see that thing? He did worse than the heathen. You understand? Because remember, he's Israel. And now he's betraying all Israel because he just wants the high priesthood. He's willing to go to make a deal with Esau, the devil, to destroy his own people. That's why it says, even above the heathen. Go ahead. He went out into all the coasts of Judea around about and took vengeance of them that had revolted from him, so that mm -hmm. they does no more go forth into the country. You see that thing? Now Judah Maccabee started to say, you know what? Let me put these Negroes to death. Go ahead. On the other side, when Alchemus saw that Judas and his company had gotten the upper hand and knew that he was not able to abide their force, he went again to the king and said all the worst of them that he could. Now he's doing, he's, he's, he's speaking even more evil. He's speaking more evil against our forefathers to the king because he's realizing, listen, what I'm doing is not going to succeed or I will not be able to overcome them. So let me go and what? And say more evil things to the king so the king can deploy more troops to go and deal with Judah Maccabee and his brethren. You understand? Now watch this. Um, give me second Maccabees 14 verse 14. Let's, let's take a step back. Okay, watch this. Second Maccabees 14 verse 14. Come on. Second Maccabees chapter 14 verse 14. Go ahead. Then the heathen that had fled out of Judea from Judas came to Nicana by flocks thinking the harm and calamities of the Jews to be their welfare. So now remember what Judah Maccabee is doing, he decided to put forth, bring forth vengeance and put to death those that revolted. You understand, meaning those that joined themselves to Alchemus, because why? Because they knew that if we join ourselves to Alchemus, Alchemus has some connections, you understand, to Demetrius. So we're gonna be good. But now what we're reading is as they heathen that fled out of Judea from Judas came to Nicana by flocks, thinking the harm and calamities of the Jews to be their welfare. Watch this, go ahead. Now, when the Jews heard of Nicana's coming and that the heathen were up against them, they cast earth upon their heads and made supplication to him that had established his people forever and who always helpeth his portion with manifestation of his presence. Now watch this, we're gonna pause right there, we're coming back. Now at this point, it says when the Jews heard of Nicanor's coming, let's take a step back. Go back to first Maccabees 7, now read verse 27. Remember, Alchemus, he went to, Alchemus went to King Demetrius 
to speak more evil because he saw that he could not overcome our forefather Judah Maccabee. So now King Demetrius is going to deploy Nicana to come to Jerusalem. Watch this. Second Maccabees 727. First Maccabees chapter 7, verse 27. Let's, let's read verse 26. Read verse 26 down now. We read it earlier to find out who Nicana was, but let's read it again. Okay, come on. First Maccabees chapter 7, verse 26. Mm -hmm. Then the king sent Nicana, one of his honorable princes, a man that bear deadly hate unto Israel, with commandment to destroy the people. Great. So Nicana came to Jerusalem with a great force and sent unto Judas and his brethren deceitfully with friendly words, saying. So now, is, you see what Nicana is doing? Because remember, Demetrius at the beginning, he sent who? Barkites and Alchemists. They also came deceitfully. Now this time, he's seeing they cannot prevail our forefather Judah Maccabee. Now they are sending Nicana. He's also coming with the same spirit. So you think our forefathers are not going to see what's going on here? Of course they will. Go ahead. Let there be no battle between me and you. I will come with a few men that I may see you in peace. So now Nicana is saying, listen, let's not, let's not, we mustn't fight. No fighting between you and me. I'm going to bring a few men that they may see you in peace. Meaning what? Let's have a peace, dis peaceful discussion here. Okay, go ahead. He came therefore to Judas and they saluted one another peaceably. Howbeit, the enemies were prepared to take away Judas by violence. So the enemies that were prepared to take our forefathers by violence. Go ahead. Like Esau has been doing all this. He's been doing throughout the continent of Africa. You understand? Taking our lands, dividing us. You understand? Making us fight amongst each other while he's robbing us in the, in the midst of it. Okay? And taking the lands and resources by violence. Go ahead. Which thing after it was known to Judas, to wit, that he came unto him with deceit. He was mm -hmm. so afraid of him and would see his face no more. So now our forefather Judah Maccabee was aware of what's going on. Go ahead. Nicana also, when he saw that his counsel was discovered, went out to fight against Judas beside Kafa Salama. So what's happening here is that Judah Maccabee discovered what was going on and Nicana discovered that he was discovered. Okay, now it's war time. Go ahead. Where there were slain of Nicanor's side about 5,000 men, and the rest fled into the city of David. Now Judah Maccabee is putting them to flight, Nicanor's host. Because why? Because he discovered the most I put the spirit upon him to realize what was going on. Go ahead. After this went Nicanor up to Mount Zion, and there came out of the sanctuary certain of the priests and certain of the elders of the people to salute him peaceably and to show him the burnt sacrifice that was offered for the king. Great. But he mocked them and laughed at them and abused mm. them shamefully and spake proudly. You see that thing? Now, you see what he's doing? So now they are coming peaceably unto him. You see what he's doing? He says, but he mocked them and laughed at them and abused them shamefully and speak proudly. Remember, what we are doing right now, we are building a spiritual house. We are offering up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. We keep in the commandments in the faith of our Lord and Savior, the Black Messiah, Jesus the Christ. The nations are laughing us to scorn. How do they do it? They say, no, we are not the real Israelites. That's why they call us Black Hebrew Israelites. But we're not Black Hebrew Israelites. We're Hebrews. That's it. We're the children of Israel. We are God's chosen people. We are the sons and daughters of God. But they humiliate us in the media. They use our own people to speak against us. That's why you see there's this vendor Negro that is online, that is following that, that put a video out about us, about us that we, we, where we teach. He says we teach in Santin, we teach in Pretoria. That's alchemists right there. You understand? That's alchemists. That's what you are seeing. Go ahead. So the same thing that the heathens are doing, mocking us, they are doing us, they are doing it through the media and they are using our own people to do it. Not only that, they are using what? They are using the, these famous pastors to push garbage into the black community through these black churches that have white images inside. 
Go ahead. And swear in his wrath, saying, unless Judas and his host be now delivered into my hands, if ever I come again in safety, I will burn up this house. And with that, he went out in a great rage. You see what he's making a promise as he says, I will, I'm going to burn up this house, meaning the temple. And with that, he went out in a great rage. Remember, verse 26, he tells you, says, a man that bear deadly hate unto Israel. Go ahead, watch this. You see now, he's, make, he's making all these threats. He's speaking evil. He's opening it his mouth against Israel. Go ahead. Then the priests entered in and stood before the altar in the temple, weeping and saying, so now the priests are going to pray to the Lord for deliverance. Now watch this. Hold that. Go back to 2 Maccabees 14 now. Let's read verse 14. We're going to read down. Okay. 2 Maccabees chapter 14 verse 14. Mm -hmm. Then the heathen that had fled out of Judea from Judas came to Nicana by flocks, thinking the harm and calamities of the Jews to be their welfare. Right. Now, when the Jews heard of Nicanor's coming and that the heathen were up against them, they cast earth upon their heads and made supplication to him that had established his people forever. And who always helpeth his portion with manifestation of his presence. So now, remember, when they heard of Nicanor's coming, it doesn't So at the command of the captain, oh, no. they removed straight ways from thence and came near unto them at the town of their soul. Wait, because now you are, you, are, you, are, you are just reading. You're not listening. So what we're reading here, brothers and sisters, you can hear me, right? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay, all praises. So I'm going to show you something what we just read here. You see in verse, in verse 15, it says, Now when the Jews heard of Nicanor's coming and that the heathen were up against them, they cast earth upon their heads, and made supplication to him that had established his people forever. That's the most high. And who always helpeth his portion with manifestation of his presence. So what did they do? Because the reason why our forefather Judah Maccabee was able to pick up that they are coming deceitfully is because when they heard of Nicanor's coming, they, what did they do? They afflicted their soul. That's why he says, he says what? They cast earth upon their heads and made supplication to him that had it establishes people forever. Whenever the nations go against us, guess what we do? We fast, we pray, we send the prayers up that the Lord be able to deliver us out of their hands. You understand? That's what we did always. So that's why whenever, whenever there's problems, guess what we do? We fast. We fast that the Most High God be able to have mercy upon us and deliver us out of the hands of our enemies. That's always the solution. Prayer. You pray, you fast, you keep the commandments, you stay in the spirit, the Lord will deliver you. That's why as a congregation, we fast every week because we know that we are in trouble. We are surrounded by our enemies and our enemies, they want what? They want to put us to death. Both men, women, and children, they don't want Israel to rise up. Understand that. So all of this is what our forefathers did at four time. We just following after their footsteps. Okay, read verse 16, come on. Second Maccabees, chapter 14, verse 16. So at the commandment of the captain, they removed straightways from thence and came near unto them at the town of Desu. Right. Now Simon, Judas's brother, had joined battle with Nicanor, but was somewhat discomfited through the sudden silence of his enemies. So now when he says he joined battle with Nicanor, meaning he went to war against him. You understand? He, you see, our forefathers, the Assyrians, meaning what Judah Maccabee and his brethren, the sons of Marathias, guess what they did? They always worked together at the time of war. All the time. They always worked together. That's why the Lord says, gather yourself together. We must have that brotherly love. We must have that brotherly covenant because we all we've got. You understand? So we must be our brother's keeper. That's what you are seeing going on here. You understand? Read. Nevertheless, Nicanor, hearing of the manliness of them that were with Judas and the courageousness that they had to fight for their country, does, does not try the matter by the sword, 
He says, I'm not going to try this matter by the sword because I see these are men of war. Okay, go ahead. Wherefore, he sent Posidonius, the Theodotus, and Marathias to make peace. Right. So when they had taken long advisement thereupon, and the captain had made the multitude acquainted therewith, and it appeared that they were all of one mind, they consented to the covenants. You see that thing? Because they realized that we are all of one mind. When, when, we, are in, when we are with one mind, we move with one mind, one spirit, one judgment. No nation can come against us because we are all speaking the same thing. We think the same way because our thought process is based on what is written in this book. The nations cannot come among us and divide us. You understand? Okay. Jump down to verse 22. Second Maccabees chapter 14, verse 22. Judas placed armed men ready in convenient places lest some treachery should be suddenly practiced by the enemies. So they made a peaceable conference. They made a peaceable conference. Remember now, watch this, because remember what we read in 1 Maccabees chapter 7. In 1 Maccabees chapter 7, there was war that took place, right? This war that took place, Nikena was upset. You understand? So what we read in here, this is now another attempt to make peace with our forefather Judah Maccabee. Okay, go ahead. Watch this. Read. Now, Nicanor abode in Jerusalem and did no hurt, but sent away the people that came flocking unto him. You see that thing? So he sent the people away. He says, listen, I'm by myself. I'm alone. Okay, go ahead. Watch this. Remember, the first time it didn't work. And he, listen, Nicanor's host was discomfited. Now he's realizing, listen, I need to put my tail between my legs. I need to make peace with this guy. Okay, read. And he would not willingly have Judas out of his sight, for he loved the man from his heart. So he couldn't help but love our forefather Judah Maccabee, despite what was said of him by Alchemus. Okay, go ahead, watch this. He prayed him also to take a wife and to beget children. So he married, was quiet, and took part of this life. So now what's happening here is that now they made a peace treaty. There was a peace treaty that took place here. You understand? So now um, Nikena and Judah Maccabee and his brethren, they have made peace. Watch what happens next. Because remember, Alchemus still wants the high priest. Then he still wants the high priest too. He wants power. So he's not gonna like the fact that this right here, what is taking place, he's not gonna like that. You know what? Well, you know what this goes into? When you notice in, 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 especially at work, you notice there's this wicked Negro, he's always telling on us on the white man. He goes to tell, he talk to the boss and say, you know, this guy is doing this, that one is doing that, that one. Even so when he looks at you, whenever you think you're doing something good, no, no, no. They are looking at you and they say, you are a dumbass. You are a rat. You are evil. Because you are actually willing to come and speak evil of your own brothers to us. So what is that letting them know? They are letting, it's letting your behavior is letting them know that if you can betray your own people to us, what about us? You will betray us as well. You're not going to be faithful to us. So they are just going to use you until, one, until they drop you because they know that you're, you're only as good as the information you provide. Once the information, you no longer have good intel, guess what? You no longer, they no longer want to talk to you. You see that thing? And the people that you speak evil of, your own brothers, the minute you start to see they, they are saying the same brothers that you speak evil of to the boss and the boss starting to have friendly relations with them, now you're going to be upset. Guess what you're going to do? You're going to go back to the boss and start to speak evil things to destroy that relationship. That's the Negro for you, okay? That's what's going on here. Now, that's what's about to happen. Well, read on, verse 26. But Alchemist, perceiving the love that was betwixt them and considering the covenants that were made, came to Demetrius and told him that Nicanor was not well affected toward the state. You see that thing? For that now, hold on. Now, he's throwing Nicanor under the bus. He said, listen, Nicanor is not doing what was instructed of him. 
Now he's doing things that will affect negatively the state. You understand? Go ahead. For that, he had ordained Judas, a traitor to his realm, to be the king's successor. You see that thing? Now he's slandering. He says now he wants Judas wants to be the king's successor. Listen, that's what was going on here. They made a peace treaty between who? They made a peace treaty, no, not Judas, not Judas our forefather, but Nicaen. You understand? Nicaen wants to be the king. So obviously, Demetrius is not going to be happy about this. Okay. Read. Then the king, being in a rage and provoked with the accusations of the most wicked men, wrote to Nicaen, signifying that he was much displeased with the covenants and commanding him that he should stand Maccabees prisoner in all haste unto Antioch. You see what he's saying? He said, listen, you better, you better throw that brother in jail. Throw that Negro in jail. You understand? Go ahead. When this came to Nicanor's hearing, he was much confounded in himself and took it grievously that he should make void the articles which were agreed upon, the man being in no fault. You see that thing? So now then, I mean, Judah Maccabee didn't do anything wrong. But now because of the letter that was sent by Demetrius, now Nicana, his character, his behavior, his manner is gonna change towards our forefather Judah Maccabee. Now all the argument that they had, they are all gonna fall or to the ground because of Alchemist. You understand? Another black man, right? But because there was no dealing against the king, he watched his time to accomplish this thing by policy. You see that thing? He needed to set up a policy, a decree. Read on. Notwithstanding, when Maccabees saw that Nicana began to be churlished unto him and that he entreated him more roughly than he was wont, perceiving that such sour behavior came not of good, he gathered together not a few of his men and withdrew himself from Nicana. You see, you see that thing? He made a wise decision. He said, okay, let me separate myself from my enemies. Like we read in Sarah 6, verse 13. Okay, now watch this. Keep going. Verse 31, right? But the other, knowing that he was notably prevented by Judas's policy, came into the great and holy temple and commanded the priests that were offering their usual sacrifices to deliver him the men. Right? And when they swear that they could not tell where the man was whom he sought, he stretched out his right hand toward the temple and made an oath in, his, in this manner. If you will not deliver me Judas as a prisoner, I will lay this temple of God even with the ground. And I will break down the altar and erect a notable temple unto Bacchus. Okay, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, yes, yes, yes. No, no, this, this is not the second time. They are just giving me more, that's giving us more details of what took place in First Maccabees 7. So what we're reading here, in First Maccabees 7, it does not say he stretched out his right hand to, and pointed towards the temple. Here in Second Maccabees, they are giving us more details on this wise. Now read verse 33 again. Second Maccabees chapter 14, verse 33. Go ahead. He stretched out his right hand toward the temple and mm -hmm. made an oath in this manner. Right. If, you will, if you will not deliver me, Judas, as a prisoner, I will lay this temple of God even with the ground, and I will break down the altar and erect a notable temple unto Bacchus. Now, let's this again. I'm going to do something again. Second Maccabees chapter 14, verse 33. He stretched out his right hand toward the temple and um, made an oath in this manner. If you will not deliver me Judas as a prisoner, I will lay this temple of God even with the ground and I will break down the altar and erect a notable temple unto Bacchus. You see what he's saying right there? He said, listen, if you don't deliver me Judah Maccabee, I'm gonna destroy the temple, right? Not only that, but I'm gonna destroy the temple and set up the temple of Bacchus. You see that thing? The temple of Bacchus today is called Bar Labor Day Parade. Anybody know that what that is? 
is is a it's it's a feast that is celebrated in the Caribbean islands. You understand? They call it Labor Day Parade, where you see many of our brothers and sisters in Jamaica. They flood the streets. What they do is the men and women on that day they sleep with everyone. The men sleep with every woman. The women sleep with every man. By the time the feast is done, a couple of months later, a lot of them, they are pregnant with men they don't know. Orgies. That's what they do. So what Niken is saying, he says, I'm going to set up an altar here. And guess what? There's going to be evil that is going to be done on in the temple. Meaning what? Orgies. Okay? So that's what he's saying right there. Now, let's go to chapter 15 verse 1 because the whole reason why we went through all these precepts is to do what is to go back it is so that we can understand what's happening in chapter 15 so i took you back so that we can now understand chapter 15 down okay go now to second maccabees 15 and 1 he's going to set up backers if Dura maccabee is not delivered into his hand you understand okay because remember the only reason why they were able to find him out was because of what? Remember, they afflicted their soul, they fasted. So they were able to what? Discover what was what was his plan. Okay. And Alchemus also, he was in the mix because he wanted high priest. So could you imagine that? I mean, think about it like this, right? Here we are, we go to war. Here we are, we having classes. Here we are, we meet together as a congregation about, you understand, when we gather together as a congregation, whether it's during feast days and whatnot. And guess what? You have a Negro in the midst of us who's feeding information to the white man, the Chinese man, you understand, about what's going on in the camp. Could you imagine that? Just think about that thing. We laugh, we eat together, we observe feast days and all that. He's sitting there with a the recorder, just recording everyone. Imagine that. And then one day you come across a recording that, wait a minute, we were having a feast. How did this get out? Because there was a wicked Negro among us. You brothers understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, these things are real. So don't be sleeping up in here. Okay? Now, Second Maccabees 15 and 1. Read what you got. Second Maccabees chapter 15, verse 1. Mm -hmm. But Nicanor, hearing that Judas and his company were in the strong places about Samaria, resolved really? without any danger to set upon them on the Sabbath day. So now what we're reading here, remember, he said he pre made a, he made an oath that he's gonna destroy the temple and he's gonna set up the, the temple of Bacchus in his place. So now what's happening here is that the war is not over. Now in chapter 15, it's going to go full on, blow, full blown war now. You understand? Where we're going to wage war with Nicana for what he said. The Lord is going to put the spirit upon our forefathers to go and wage war against Nicana and put that, that wicked Edomite to death. You understand? So this feast is about, we are celebrating the destruction of that wicked Edomite, the Greeks. Our enemies, we celebrate their destruction. That's what this, this feast is about. Celebration of the destruction of our enemies. Hmm. That's beautiful right there. You understand? If you are still that retroactive Christian up in here, you're going to be saying, not my white Jesus. Yes. We're not talking about white Jesus yet. Talk about the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ, as it is written. You understand? Read that. Read that again. First Maccabees 15 verse 1. Come on. Second Maccabees chapter 15, verse 1. Go ahead. But Nicanor, hearing that Judas and his company were in the strong places about Samaria, resolved mm -hmm. without any danger to set upon them on the Sabbath day. Read. Nevertheless, the Jews that were compelled to go with him said, Oh, destroy not so cruelly and barbarously, but give honor to that day which he that seeth all things has honored with holiness above other days. Let's talk about the most High God now, meaning what? The regarding the Sabbath day in verse one. Come on. Then the most ungracious wretch demanded, if there were a mighty one in heaven, 
that had commanded the Sabbath day to be kept. So now you see this ungracious wretch, it goes into Nicaena. It says, if they be a mighty one in heaven that had commanded the Sabbath day to be kept. Of course, there is a mighty one in heaven that commanded the Sabbath day to be kept on the seventh day. Okay, read. And when they said, there is in heaven a living Lord and mighty mm -hmm. who Go commanded ahead. the seventh day to be kept. That's another piece there for the Sabbath right there. Read that again, verse 4. Second Maccabees chapter 15, verse 4. And when they said, there is in heaven a living Lord and mighty who commanded the seventh day to be kept. The most High God commanded the seventh day to be kept holy, according to Exodus 20, verse 8 to 11. Go ahead. Then said the other, and I also am mighty upon earth, and I command to take arms and to do the king's business. Yet he obtained not to have his wicked will done. Because why? The most High God was not going to approve this thing because they want to go against us. You understand? They are not going to succeed. Go ahead. So Nicana, in exceeding pride and haughtiness, determined to set up a public monument of his victory over Judas and them that were with him. Hmm, look at the arrogance. Because remember, he said there's no God that is that commanded this Sabbath day to be kept. You understand? So he's questioning the existence of the Holy One of Israel. That's the same mistake that Pharaoh made when we were delivered out of Egypt. That's the same mistake he made. Who is the Lord that I should let Israel go? That's what that was Pharaoh's question to our forefather Moses. He asked that question. And guess what? Egypt is no more. Okay, go ahead. But Maccabees had ever sure confidence that the Lord would help him. All praises to the Lord. Read again, verse 7. Second Maccabees chapter 15, verse 7. Go ahead. But Maccabees had ever sure confidence that the Lord would help him. You see, our forefather Maccabee, he trusted in the Lord. He says he had sure confidence that the Lord would help him. There's no doubt, brothers, the mission is a go. Go ahead. Wherefore, he exhorted his people not to fear the coming of the heathen against them, mm -hmm. but to remember the help which in former times they had received from heaven. And really? now to expect the victory and aid which should come unto them from the Almighty. Come on. And so comforting them out of the law and the prophets, mm. and with all putting them in mind of the battles that they won afore, he made Come them on. more cheerful. You see that thing? He says he comforted them out of the law and the prophets. Mm. That's beautiful right there. Go ahead. And when he had stirred up their minds, he gave them their charge, showing them therewithal the falsehood of the heathen and the breach of oaths. The falsehood of the heathens, because that's what the heathens do. That's why the scripture says, don't trust your enemies, because they're always coming with false um, statements. They're always coming with fake treaties, you understand, to deceive the minds of the children of Israel. You understand? They're always coming with that. They, they always break those arguments. So the Lord is, is putting the spirit upon our forefathers and say, listen, don't be afraid of these heathens and their wicked and evil devices. Don't be afraid. Help coming from heaven. Go ahead. Thus he armed every one of them, not so much with defense of shields and spears as with comfortable and good words. And beside that, he told them a dream worthy to be believed as mm. if it had been so indeed, which did not a little rejoice them. Watch this, go ahead. And this was his vision, that Onias, who had been high priest, a virtuous and a good man, reverent in conversation, gentle in condition, well-spoken also, and exercised from a child in all points of virtue, holding up his hands, prayed for the whole body of the Jews, you see that thing? So let us always pray for the people. Let us always pray for the, for the people, for the people to overcome mental, physical, and spiritual hangups. Okay, go ahead. This done, in like manner, there appeared a man with gray hairs and exceeding glorious, who was mm. of the wonderful and excellent majesty. 
That's true. That goes into the law. He says what? He says, this done in like manner, there appeared a man with gray hairs and exceeding glorious, who was of a wonderful and excellent majesty. Hmm. Okay. Revelation 1, 14, 15. Keep going. Read on. Then Onias answered, saying, this is a lover of the brethren. This is a what? Pray it. This is the lover of the brethren. This is a lover of the brethren. This is a lover of the brethren. Who does what? Who prayeth much for the people. Who prayeth much for the people. He prays much for the people. When you love your people, you're going to pray for your people. You fast for your people. You apply the laws of God for the sake of your nation. Go ahead. And for the holy city to wit, Jeremiah is the prophet of God. Jeremiah is the prophet of God. Mm. Keep going. Whereupon Jeremiah, is holding forth his right hand, gave to Judas a sword of gold, and in giving it, spake thus. So now watch this. Remember now. Okay, verse 13 is twofold, but he's really going into the prophet Jeremiah. Okay, but read verse 15. I want to show you something here. Read verse 15 again. Second Maccabees chapter 15, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Whereupon Jeremiah, holding forth his right hand, gave to Judas a sword of gold, and in giving it, spake thus. So now Jeremiah is giving our forefather Judah Maccabee a sword of gold. And as he's giving him the sword, this is what he said. Go ahead. Take this holy sword, a gift from God, okay. with the which... Read again. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Read verse 16 again. Read it slow for me. Second Maccabees, chapter 15, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Take this holy sword, Come a on. gift from God. A what? A gift from God. He says, take this holy sword. Take this holy sword, a gift from God. Go ahead. With the which thou shalt wound the adversaries. Which with, with which you shall wound the adversaries. We're going to wound the adversaries with this holy sword. All that, give me Ephesians 6. Ephesians chapter 6, and let's start at verse, let's start at verse 16. Ephesians 6 verse 16. Watch this. Hmm. Take this holy sword. Let, you know what? Let's start at verse 13. Let's start at verse 13. Hmm. You know what? Start at verse 12. Hmm. Read verse 12 for me. Come on, come on. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. Go ahead. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, uh -huh. but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against Wait. spiritual wickedness in high places. That's the war that we're in. The war that we're in is a spiritual war. It's not a physical war. It's not the war that we bring guns, we bring knives, we bring fists. Mm -mm. This is a spiritual warfare that we're in. We use the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The holy sword that the Lord has given us to us as a gift that we may be able to overcome our enemies. You understand? The walls of the devil. That's what the apostle Paul is writing to the church of Ephesus. That's the same thing that we are reading here in 2 Maccabees 15. Go ahead. Verse 13. Read. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. The whole armor of God is this whole pile. The whole armor is the whole pile. Because now the war that we're in is what? The war of the spirit, which is what? We're using the word of God to fight against all men of evil that is surrounding us. Whether it's somebody approaching you, whether it's something that is playing on TV, whether it's something that, something that somebody is saying, whatever it is, you must always evaluate it, whether it's going to be good for your soul or bad for your spirit. That's your job to tell the difference between those things. When you are in this book, when you take that, we take hold of that holy sword and you fight against the spiritual demons that are all up everywhere, where you, wherever we are, there's, there's, there's demons everywhere. Our job is to slay the demons with the sword. And where does it take place? Your, the fight in your mind. That's where it takes place. You understand? Go ahead. That ye may be able to withstand in the, in the evil day uh -huh. and having done all to stand. The evil day is the day of your trial. The evil day is the day of your affliction. The evil day is when the day is the day when the Lord returns. But before the Lord returns, 
you must, each and every one of us, we must experience the evil day, the day of your temptation, where your spirit is going to be tried. Understand that. Read. Really? Stand therefore, having your loins get about with truth. Our loins must be get about with truth, the truth of this Bible. Go ahead. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness. That's the armor that we put on. Read. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You see that thing? Your feet must be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace is what? Is the kingdom of heaven on earth. Because the gospel of peace is the word of God, which will bring forth the kingdom unto us. It says your feet must be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Because there will be the only time when there will be peace on this earth is when Israel take all of this Bible and rule the earth. That's the only time there will be peace on this earth. Read. Really. Above all, taking the shield of faith, mm -hmm. wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You see that thing? That's the war. The war, that's where the war takes place. It says, you must take the shield of faith wherewith he shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. What is the fiery darts of the wicked? Politics, religion, democracy. You understand? Homosexuality. Hmm? Why Jesus? Women wearing pants. We, men wearing dresses. Men shaving of their beards. Not getting married. Promoting promiscuity and prostitution in the black community. Abortion. You understand? Drug dealing. Using guns and all that. That right there, those are part of the fiery darts of the wicked. The media, social media, all these media, social media outlets, that right there is the fiery dart of the wicked. Read. And take the helmet of salvation. You see that thing? Sword of take the, read, listen, the Apostle Paul is putting us in the mindset of a warrior. The Apostle Paul is putting us in the mindset of a warrior, like we're reading here in the book of Second Maccabees. They are putting us in the mind of a warrior. You understand? Because you, you must prepare yourself for war because we are at war and it's a spiritual war. This type of war is called the cold war. You don't see it, but you experience it. The only way for you to be able to see clearly what's going on, you must put on the breastplate of righteousness. You understand? The shield of faith, the helmet of salvation. You understand? Which is the word of God. Go ahead. And take the helmet of salvation and the mm -hmm. sword of the spirit and the which what? is the word and the sword of the spirit and the what and the sword of the spirit and the sword of the spirit the sword of the spirit the holy sword which is the gift from god the holy sword which is the gift from god the sword of the spirit what is the sword of the spirit go ahead which is the word of god you see that thing right there the word of god is how we are going to overcome the word of god is how we are going to be able to what to deal with all the fiery darts of the wicked. The most that God has given us a weapon of war to be able to overcome our enemies, to overcome the evils that our enemies are planning behind closed doors to destroy our sons and our daughters. The most that God has given us a gift. The gift is this Bible. When we stay in this Bible, we will surely overcome. Understand that. Go back to 2 Maccabees 15. 2 Maccabees 15 verse 16 again. Read that thing for me. 2 Maccabees. Chapter 15, verse 16. Read. Take this holy sword, a gift from God, mm -hmm. with the which thou shalt wound the adversaries. We're going to wound the enemies with the sword. The sword is the word of God. That's what we need to understand. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That's how we are going to be able to wound our enemies with this thing. Understand that. Read on. Come on. Thus, being well comforted by the words of Judas, which were very good and able to stand them up to valor. You see that thing? And to encourage them, to exhort them. Read. And to encourage the hearts of the young men. Mm -hmm. They determined not to pitch camp, but courageously to set upon them and manfully to try the matter by conflict. Read. Because the city and the sanctuary and the temple were in danger. You see that part right there? It says, but courageously to set upon them and manfully to try the matter by conflict. Meaning what? By war. By warfare. That's what we're doing right now. 
We, we, we pleading with our, we pleading for the, for the deliverance of the minds of our people. You understand? What do we do? We de we dealing with we we dealing manfully. We trying the matter by conflict. How we go out there to teach our people God's laws to get rid of the what the brainwashing Jews that our enemies has given to our forefathers and foremothers that they are still doing it today. Every Sunday, every week, you understand? They are brainwashing our people and destroying them. So as we go out there to pull down these strongholds. Our enemies will not be happy about that thing. And I need you men to understand that. This is a war. When we go out there, it's not a place to hang out. We are there to fight literally for the minds of our people. Understand that. That's why when I see a brother not falling in line, you make me sick to my stomach because you don't understand what war you're in. You don't understand what this is about. We are at war. The nations don't, their nations are not happy with what we're doing. The nations are sitting behind closed doors discussing on how they must stop this truth, how they must hinder us from building, just like they were doing during the time of Persia. They are doing it today. And today, Esau has all the power, all the media to do what? To shut us down, black us out, you understand? To send our own people against us. So when I see a brother, you given a command, he's procrastinating, you hate your, you hate your nation. You don't want to do nothing for your nation. You understand? You better get your mind right. We are at war out here. You understand? I need you sisters to understand that too. I need you and I need you men to understand it, especially you men. Because if we don't stand up, don't nobody gonna do it. You understand? We are the last line of defense. So you must hold the line. Hold the line until the Lord returns. Understand that. We know. Come on. For the care that they took for their wives and their mm -hmm. children, their mm -hmm. brethren. Come on. was in least account with them. But the greatest and principal fear was for the holy temple. You see that thing? Was the holy temple, the spiritual temple now, the spiritual house that we're building now, you understand? To what? To make sure that the minds of our people, our people receive this truth. Our people receive the laws of God so they may be sealed, so that when the Lord returns, we may be delivered. Because our people are in danger. We're in trouble. Israel is in a state of emergency. That's why I keep saying it over and over. But some of you is not sinking in. We are in the state of emergency. We don't got time to play. Understand that, Ray. Also, they that were in the city took not the least care, being troubled for the conflict abroad. Ray. And now, when as all looked, what should be the trial? And the enemies were already come near. And the army was set in array, and the beasts conveniently placed, and the horsemen set in wings. So now you've got a host now. It's war time. You understand? The nations are going to war with us. Watch this. Go ahead. Maccabees, seeing the coming of the multitude, and the diverse preparations of armor, and the fierceness of the beasts, stretched out his hands toward heaven, and called mm -hmm. upon the Lord that worketh really? wonders. You see that? No way. What did he do? What did he do? He says he did what to heaven? Stretched out his hands towards heaven uh -huh. and called upon the Lord that worketh wonders. You see what he did? He, he wasn't afraid. He says he stretched out his hand towards heaven. You understand? He stretched out his hand towards heaven and called upon the Lord that worketh wonders. Go ahead. Knowing that victory cometh not by arms, uh -huh. but even as it seemeth good to him, he giveth, it to, he giveth it to such as are worthy. You see that thing? The victory will be given to such as are worthy. So when we are in the spirit, we are all on one accord. We believe the same thing. The most High God will definitely deliver us. He will defend us. Wherever we, or we go in the country, wherever we go to teach the gospel, the Lord will surely deliver us. Understand that, right? Therefore, in his prayer, he said after this manner, O Lord, thou didst send thine angel in the time of Ezekiah, king of Judea, and right. didst slay in the host of Sennacherib, and hundred four score and five thousand. You see that thing? And hundred hundred and eighty five thousand men were put to death by the angels in one night. Hundred and eighty five thousand. 
of the Assyrian army was killed by the angels overnight and nobody had anything. They only saw the bodies piled up in the morning when everybody woke up. You see that thing? That's when the most High God fights for us. So I need you men to understand when we go to camp, you understand? Understand that the angels are in the midst of us ministering unto us. Understand that. Understand that thing. Go ahead. Wherefore now also, O Lord of heaven, send a good angel before us for your fear and tread unto them. You see that thing? These praises, O Lord of heaven, send a good angel before us for a fear and dread unto them. So when we go to war, that's always the prayer that the Lord be able to de the, the Lord deploy a host of righteous angels around us when we go to war. We go to camp. We go for flyer missions. The most said God, we pray that he deploy a host of righteous angels around us and a pillar of cloud by day. The same way he worked with us in the wilderness when we came out of Egypt. That's the same prayers. You understand? Read. And through the might of thine arm, let those be stricken with terror that come mm -hmm. against thy holy people to blaspheme. And Read. he ended thus. He ended the prayer. Now is war time. Go ahead. The Nicanor and they that were with him came forward with trumpets and songs. Come on. But Judas and his company encountered the enemies with invocation and prayer. You see what it is? So, is it, but Judas and his company encountered the enemies with invocation and prayer. You see, the strength comes from heaven. Our forefathers had great faith. When they went to war, guess what? They prayed to the Father. Deploy also righteous angels around us to keep us in the way, to be in the midst of us, to fight with us to fight for us. That's the same thing they did. That's the same thing that our forefather Judah Maccabee is doing. So whenever we go to camp, that's always the prayer. Whenever we, we are we having class, that's always the prayer. Understand that. Okay, go ahead. So that fighting with their hands and praying unto God with their hearts, they mm -hmm. slew no less than 13, 5,000 men. Really? Go ahead. For, for through the appearance of God, they were greatly cheered. You see that thing? So through the appearance of God, they were greatly cheered because the Lord was in the midst of us. Ray. Now when the battle was done, returning again with joy, they knew that Nicana lay dead in his harness. You see that thing? He got put to death in the midst of a battle. Nicana was put to death. Go ahead, watch this. Then they made a great shout and a noise. Pray. Ray the almighty in their own language. Mm -hmm. And Judas, who was ever the chief defender of the citizens, both in body and mind, and who continued his love toward his countrymen all his life, Wait. commanded to strike off Nicanor's head and his mm -hmm. hand with his shoulder and bring them to Jerusalem. You see that thing? He said, listen, he said, listen, this is not enough that he's dead. We must cut his head off, you understand? His shoulder and his hand that he used to point at the temple and say, listen, I'm gonna destroy this temple and I'm gonna destroy it, break it in pieces and I'm gonna set up the, the temple of Bacchus. For that thing right there, we are gonna humiliate him. He's gonna be condemned with a shameful death. That's the, the prayer that we must pray to the, to the father against our enemies. This is the prayer that we must pray that our enemies be destroyed and be condemned with a shameful death. That's the prayer we all must have on a daily basis. Read. So when he was there and had called them of his nation together and mm -hmm. sent the priests before the altar, he sent for them that were off the tower. Come on. And showed them, and showed them vile Nicanor's head mm -hmm. and the hand of that blasphemer. Which Read. With proud breaks, he had stretched out against the holy temple of the Almighty. Come on. And when he had cut out the tongue of that ungodly Nicanor, he commanded that they should give it by pieces unto the fowls and mm -hmm. hang up the reward of his madness before the temple. And hang up the reward of his madness before the temple for all to see. Because remember, the nations, you know what they were doing? Because look at what was happening in Pretoria during the 50s and 60s 
when they were hanging our forefathers and foremothers, castrating them and all that. The Buddhas was doing it in Pretoria. You understand? They were doing that. So now what you are seeing here, what we're reading here, is what we did to our enemies when they were speaking evil against us, when they were speaking evil against our temple. Right now, how are they speaking evil against the temple? Because we the temple. They speak evil of us. They took our book. They made, they turned our book into an international book. The Bible is not an international book. The white man took our book. He took all the black images in the Bible. He changed the images of Christ, you understand, and made him white. He changed the images of the angels and made them white. He changed the image of God and made him white using Michelangelo, you understand? Leonardo da Vinci and all these other artists that came during the Renaissance to what? To do a thing called iconoclasm, meaning the changing of images, eradication of history through images. That's what the white man has been doing from the 1400s when he took over, you understand? So now, what, why, why are they doing this? They're doing it to humiliate us. And now, not only that, they turn the book, the Bible, into an international book. That's why now the Chinese want to change the Bible. They want to write their own translation of the Bible. They say, no, the Bible, the way it's written is not correct. Now they want to add things in there. They want to put Confucius in the Bible now. Madness. You understand? Who's pushing this? The white man is encouraging all these nations to mess up with our records. Understand that? So guess what? We pray for the destruction of this white man. We pray for the destruction of these Chinese men. We pray for the destruction of all these nations that came against us. Who's going to destroy them? The Lord when he returns. When the black Messiah cracked the sky, these nations are going to get it. These nations are going to pay for what they've done to us. Understand that? Read. So every man praised toward the heaven, the glorious Lord, saying, mm -hmm. Blessed be he that has kept his own place undefiled. Well. He hanged also Nicanor's head upon the tower, an evident and manifest sign unto all of the help of the Lord. Really? And they ordained all with a common decree, in no case to let that day pass without solemn, sol solemnity, but to celebrate the 13th day of the 12th month, which in the Syrian tongue is called Ada, the day uh -huh. before Madokia's day. Madokia's day. The day before Madokia's day. So this day right here is a day that we celebrate every year. You understand? The most High God put the spirit on our forefathers to ordain this day that do not let this day pass without solemnity. Meaning gather yourself together and celebrate the destruction of your enemies that they may be condemned with a shameful death for all to see. So every year we celebrate this day for the destruction of our enemies. Understand that. And this gives us hope that the Lord will surely deliver us from the hands of our enemies. Give me Luke 171. The Lord will deliver us from the hands of our enemies, brothers and sisters. Understand that thing. You better believe this day. Okay? Read that. Luke 171. Come on. Luke chapter 1, verse 71. Come on. That we should be saved from our enemies. And mm -hmm. from the head of all that hate us. Read again, read again. Come on. Luke chapter 1, verse 71. Come on. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. You see that thing? This is the prayer. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Because all nations on earth, they hate the 12 tribes of Israel. So we must pray to be delivered from the hands of our enemies. Read to perform the mercy promised to our fathers mm -hmm. and to remember his holy covenant. Our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because this mercy was promised unto them that our enemies, that we, the children, will be delivered from the hands of our enemies. Go ahead. The oath which he swore to our father, Abraham. Mm -hmm. Come on. That, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. You see that thing? So when we are delivered from the hands of our enemies, we are going to serve the Lord without fear. Because right now, they, we are saving the Lord with fear because of what, the, what these nations are doing to us, what these nations can do to us. So now we have to be what? We have to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. That's how we must move. But when the Lord returns, 
These nations are going to know how powerful we are on this earth. The sons, on, the sons and daughters of God, we will be back in our full glory and every knee shall bow on that day. And everyone that goes against them, they are going to get instant death. Understand that. Give me that in Psalms 149. Psalms 149. We're going to do full circle now. Psalms 149. Watch this. Psalms 149. Read verse 3. Okay, come on. Psalms. Psalms. You know what? what? Start at verse 1. Start at verse 1. Start at verse 1. Come on. Psalms chapter 149, verse 1. Read. Praise ye the Lord. Sing mm -hmm. unto the Lord a new song. And his Read. praise in the congregation of saints. We, better, we must praise the Lord our God. We must praise the Lord our God for delivering us from the hands of our enemies. He did it back then during the time of Egypt. He did it all. He did it throughout all the captivities and he will surely do it again in these last days. Read. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Come on. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. We must rejoice in the Lord that made us. We must not rejoice in the white man. We must not rejoice in the Chinese man. We must not rejoice in Ishmael or the Arabs. We must not rejoice in none of these nations. We must rejoice in the Lord that made us. We must be joyful in our king, the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Read. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let Come them on. sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. Read. For the Lord take his pleasure in his people. He will mm -hmm. beautify the meek with salvation. You see that part right there? The Lord taketh pleasure in his people. When we take pleasure in the Lord, the Lord will take pleasure in us. Read. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Come Let on. them sing aloud upon their beds. Read. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a mm. two-edged sword in their hands. And a two-edged sword in their hands. That's when, when the Lord, that's when the Lord delivers us. When the Lord delivers us, we're going to, we are no longer going to be fishers of men. We're going to be hunters of men. We're going to hunt these nations down. They are going to be put in check. They are going to bow down to the king of Jacob. Understand that. Read. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments mm. upon the people. That's what's coming. We're going to execute vengeance upon the heathens and punishments upon the people. Read. To bind their king with chains. And they to are not. To bind their king with chains. To bind their kings with chains. Which, we are, which kings he's talking about? He's talking about the nobles. You understand? The presidents, the CEOs. You understand? All these, all these nobles of the heathens, we are going to bind them with chains. We're going to put chains on them. They are going to be shackled. They are going to be changed. They are going to be whipped. They are going to be whipped to submission until they bow down to the king of Jacob. Them days are coming. Understand that. Read. To bind their kings with chains and their mm -hmm. nobles with fetters of iron. And their nobles with fetters of iron. Go ahead. To execute upon them the judgment written. We're not going to execute. Listen what the Bible is saying. It says we're going to execute upon these heathens in verse 8. Guess what? The judgment that's written. We're not going to execute anything that's not written. We're going to execute every judgment according to what is written. You understand? And on that day, our spirits are going to be right. On that day, we're not going to be having Stockholm Syndrome no more. We're going to be in our right mind, uprightly, full of the spirit of the Most High God. Read again. Psalm chapter 149, verse 9. Read. To execute upon them the judgment written. Read. His honor have all his saints. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. We better praise the Lord for that day. We better praise the Lord for that day. Let's give the Lord a hand for that day. All praises. All praises. Let's give the Lord a hand for that. All praises to the Lord. All praises to the Lord for that day. Okay. I'm gonna end the class right there. Let's get First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse twenty-three. Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Okay. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed to bread, and when, when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you, it is due in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. 
it is to ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye to show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the most high hand for that. All praise to the Lord. All praise to the most high. All praise. All praise to the most high. All praise to the Lord. Brother.